In this lesson, we're going to be creating our ground plane and its texture. Okay, so to put this into context a little bit, part of the reason why we need a ground plane is to capture our shadow that we need to composite back into our shot once we get into Nuke, um, because it wouldn't make sense for our background plate here to have a shadow, but not those guts. So um, you can see there's going to be kind of an area here missing. So we want to be able to see a shadow kind of right in this spot uh, right there, or maybe just a little bit closer over here since it is being cast so far to the left. So first things first, we need to add a plane. So go into your geometry and drop in a plane. And then you can grab these little yellow dots you see right there on those handles and make this larger. So I'm just going to make it really large, just kind of where I can fill up this whole area here. And if you feel like you made it too big, you can always go in and zoom out a little bit and maybe take it back a notch if you feel like it was too much. And you can also scoot it over if you've got way too much room over here on the right. Now you don't have to make it fill up everything, but it's just safe because I know that I'm never going to go outside of this area um, where and where I would want that shadow to be. Okay, so if we turn on, let's see, we'll turn back on our sky there. If we turn on our interactive render region and take a look at this, we'll see that our shadow is being cast onto our ground. And it's going in pretty much the right direction. That's where we wanted it to go. Um, whenever we set that up in our sky, you maybe could go into your sky, into your time and day, and maybe turn it time back just a little bit, like I mean to 10 o'clock instead of 1020. And that's going to make your shadow a little bit more long to the left. So if you're wanting it to go more that way, but also it's not going to be as well lit um, on the sides of it. So it's kind of a guessing game. You've got to get that just right. I think 10 o'clock is a really safe uh, place to put that, though. I think that's going to look good. Now, two things here. We need to make sure that the plane is at the right place because right now this heart looks like it's getting cut off. So it looks like it's a little bit too high where it came in. So we probably need to push that down a little bit. So we can grab the plane and let's actually go into this view right here, our right view, or you could also do it in your front view. And you see that our carcass is right here and our plane is a little bit higher. So we can pull this down just like that. So now it's going to be underneath that. And sometimes it's going to get a little bit higher than the plane and then sometimes it's going to sit right on it. You just want to make sure that it doesn't ever go lower. If it's just a little bit higher, you really won't be able to tell. Um, you, you might be able to tell a tiny bit in the shadow, but it won't be enough that it is a make or break kind of thing. So um, let's take a look at this frame now. We've got our ground plane in the right place, and we moved forward a few frames, and so you can kind of see what this looks like at that point in time, which actually is really kind of pretty, even though it's something that's so disgusting. So now we've taken care of that first thing by getting the plane in position, but let's think for a second past where we're at right now um, and we're going to be compositing this. So we don't want to see this, we want to be able to see our background, but I can't see my background because this plane is in the way. So we need to be able to output just our shadow without this background. And to be able to do that in Cinema 4D, you need a plugin, and it's called Shadow Catcher, and you can find it at the pixellab.net. Okay, so that is got it in your um in your reference files folder. That website's going to be there for you, the pixellab.net. And there you can download that Shadow Catcher plugin for free. And it's going to go into your textures for where you would have created a texture in a material. So let's go together and we're going to create this texture um, that we'll be able to drop onto this ground plane. And you're going to see firsthand how it takes away the ground plane but leaves the shadow. So we'll come in here and we'll create a new material. And we'll double click it to open that up. 
and you might want to close out your interactive render region if it's slowing you down. You, now you don't want to have your color or your specular and I am going to need to go in and turn off my interactive render. There we go. So turn off your color, turn off your specular, turn on your alpha. That's important. So whatever we're creating now is going to be in that alpha channel. Now we want to invert this because we want everything on the inside of the shadow, not the outside. And then we need to go into our texture. And it's going to be, I'm going to move this up for you so you can see it. Whenever you load in that plugin, Shadow Catcher is going to be right there at the bottom. That's the name of the plugin. So drop that in there. And what happens is it becomes transparent almost. So what that's doing is it's saying anything that's a shadow on this layer, we're going to show everything else is going to be transparent like this. So I'll X out of this and actually I'm going to call this ground shadow. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and drop this onto the plane. Now you see it changed colors a little bit and then it changes to black. Now if we go into our interactive render region our sky is back. So we've got the sky behind us which is good because now we can see through the plane. We knew the plane was covering up the sky earlier but what we're about to see is our shadow being cast as if it's on that ground plane however the ground plane isn't there. So that is, there it is, that's exactly what we want whenever we start creating our composite. And we'll be able to actually um, set this up in our render settings so that this is an alpha that renders out like a separate pass. So we'll be able to have a pass that just contains our shadow and the alpha of our carcass here. So we can use that then to go into our footage and use that alpha to color correct the ground to make it look like the shadow is there. So it's kind of a nifty way that you can end up using this. Or um, you could do it in a couple of different ways the way that you would composite it. But what's important is that the ground plane is not being rendered into this, that you're only getting that shadow there. Now, one of the things that you'll also notice is, okay, well the ground plane's gone, but we've got the sky here now. And so the sky is going to give us some issues because the sky is just as bad as the ground plane. If it's behind that shadow, we can't really composite that. So what we can do is add a compositing tag to our sky. So if we come up here and go to tags, go to Cinema 4D tags and drop on a compositing tag, make sure that goes onto your sky, not your plane. We can go into this tag now, make sure the tag is selected and it's on the sky. And where it says seen by camera, you want to uncheck that. So what's going to happen is the sky is still going to cast itself onto your skeleton. However, the camera is not going to use that sky behind your uh, carcass. So what that scene by camera does when you uncheck that is if our ground plane, let's say we didn't pull that all the way to the edge and that extended maybe only to here, it would still be catching our shadow, but we would see the sky um, past that. Now to be able to, um, or we wouldn't see the sky past that by unchecking that. Now to not see the sky behind our uh carcass here, which is what we're really concerned with, we also need to uncheck scene by transparency. So what that does is now, if our sky is behind that transparent background, it's going to not be visible. But also, it's very important that you uncheck that scene by camera, because once that would extend, the sky would go past uh, your grid, your ground plane, that needs to be unchecked as well or you'll have some issues. So this will take a second just to come back into uh, view, but what you should end up with is your shadow, your carcass, and you should be able to see your background plate through there. Now one thing that I like to do um, at this point when I'm kind of getting all of these things set up is think about what do I want to render. So I do want this plane 
to render. I don't want to see the plane, but I want to see the shadow that's on the plane. So I can come up here and this top stoplight is going to be what I see in the perspective view. So I'm going to turn that to red so I don't see that in the perspective view, but it's still going to render because this bottom stoplight is uh, not selected. The sky, I want to be able to uh, render according to that compositing tag, and I want to be able to see its effects here in the render view as well. So I won't mess with, or in the perspective view, I won't mess with that. But the background, um, I don't want to render because we'll be compositing it later on. So I'll come down to this bottom stoplight and turn that one to red. So it's very important that you remember to do this. You go into your background and you tell that background, don't render because I don't want to see that in my final render. I want the um, transparent background so that we're able to composite it. Otherwise, that's all the compositing you would get and you would just be rendering out of Cinema 4D with that background plate present and that would look really, really ugly. So make sure that the background is set to not render by having that bottom stoplight set to red and make sure the plane is set to render but it's easier to work without seeing it in the perspective view so turn its perspective view off by turning that stoplight on top to red. Okay. So now we have our ground figured out. We've got our sky figured out. We've got the ground shadow figured out. The next thing we need to do is play around with our textures a little bit. And really, unless you knew this was going to happen by doing it, you would never really know that you needed to fix what I'm going to show you in the next lesson. And it is the uh, kind of a weird chain of events that causes this. So we've set up some jiggle deformers and they have some unintended consequences with our textures because we're using procedural textures. So in the next lesson I'm going to show you what happens and how to fix it and then we'll also be setting up a few other compositing tags. We kind of did a little bit with this compositing tag here for our sky but we'll be setting up some other things as well. So stick around and in the next lesson we're just going to be kind of cleaning everything up and getting ready to set off our render.